Thank you for joining. Uh, many thanks to uh, Raf, to Olivier for organizing the great uh, conference and for coordinating the regular meetings we've had over the past uh, years. It's been uh, great to interact and we've learned a lot, so thanks, thanks for that. Um, today I'm going to present you um, joint uh, work with Marina Emeris, who's at the bank, and Christophe Spaniers, who's at the University of uh, Colorado. And the motivation for our paper is as follows. So uh, for, many, for many households, for most households, uh, the decision on how to refinance their mortgages is one of the most important financial decisions that they're uh, ever going to take. And uh, despite the importance of this uh, decision to refinance, there's uh, large evidence that households make mistakes when refinancing. They refinance too early, too late. When they do refinance, they uh, refinance under the wrong uh, conditions, or uh, even more frequently, they fail to refinance at all. And so uh, prior research on this failure to refinance has generally focused on the uh, demand determinant uh, of uh, the failure to refinance, uh, such as behavioral biases uh, or socio-demographic characteristics that could explain why um, borrowers fail to refinance. Uh, the approach uh, we're going to take here is uh, going to focus here on the supply determinants uh, of refinancing, so looking at uh, the structure of local banking markets and in particular the role of competition and so uh, in that sense our uh, paper fits with uh, uh, another set of uh, papers that have looked at the importance of credit supply in uh, household financial decision making. And so just to further uh, emphasize that uh, refinancing is, is uh, important, uh, um, this um, uh, figure here shows you the share of mortgages, of 20-year mortgages, uh, that are uh, active some years after the issuance. So in Belgium, uh, most mortgages are a have a relatively long uh, maturity of 15 to 20 years, uh, generally with fixed interest rate. And so uh, one would think that uh, uh, borrowers or households typically take on a, a mortgage and then uh, keep it and gradually uh, reimburse it over time. Uh, in fact, that is not the case. Uh, and so uh, if we look at uh, the, the, the amount of uh, mortgages that are uh, still active um, uh, over time, we see that uh, it actually drops quite, uh, quite strongly. And so if we take, for instance, the years 2012-2013, uh, so these are the bottom uh, lines here, we see that for these 20-year mortgages, already five years after origination, uh, around 60% of these mortgages had already been uh, renegotiated. And so that varies a bit uh, depending on the origination year, but uh, uh, clearly there is, uh, it's, we're very far from this idea that um, basically borrowers just keep their mortgage for the, the full length of the, of the loan. And so... Uh, Bank uh, and borrower relationships in the renegotiation is important. And uh, the second component of the analysis that we're looking at is the importance of uh, local banking markets and the role of competition. And so that's illustrated here, showing you a map of Belgium, where for each municipality, we compute the Herfindahl index of bank market shares. So if the index is high, it means that uh, there are relatively few banks, and so some banks have a large market share in the municipality. And so we see that there's a lot of variation in the structure of local banking markets with some uh, markets that are very concentrated and others that are uh, less concentrated with more competition. And so we're going to try to link these two um, uh, components, so refinancing and the uh, competition in local banking markets. Um, and we're going to do so in two steps using both uh, theory and data. So on the theoretical side, uh, we're going to build a model of refinancing where uh, refinancing is a bargaining game between the household, its bank, and an outside uh, bank. And uh, switching from uh, one bank to the other is going to be costly for households, and, and households are going to also have a, a bargaining power vis-a-vis uh, -vis their bank. And uh, the model is going to give us a number of predictions, which we're then going to take uh, to the data using 
um, uh, unique loan level data on the universe of household borrowing in Belgium since 2006, uh, which uh, allows us to track the relationship uh, uh, of banks and borrowers over time. And we uh, also have a, a granular measurement of the local banking market characteristics, in particular the location of, of bank branches. Um, so this is a preview of the results. So on uh, the model side, we're, we're going to have a number of uh, predictions, uh, such uh, um, that the refinancing activity uh, goes up with the size and the maturity of the mortgage, and more generally with the, the benefit that you get uh, from uh, refinancing. Uh, the model predicts uh, intuitively that if a local, uh, local competition increases, refinancing activity is also uh, going to increase, in particular external refinancing, so switching, uh, switching banks. And uh, it also uh, makes a prediction that households with lower switching costs are more likely to refinance externally, um, but have lower average gains conditional on refinancing. And so when we move to the data, the uh, facts that we uncover are very much in line with the, the predictions of the model. And in particular, we find that there's uh, um, um, uh, relationship between bank competition and refinancing should that higher uh, bank competition is associated with uh, um, um, uh, less uh, with more refinancing activity and so higher market concentration with lower refinancing propensity. Um, the, I've mentioned already a number of papers, and so let me not uh, spend too much time on, on the literature, but just mention that probably work that are closest to ours uh, is uh, work by Alan et al. and Alan and co-authors, and work by Agarwal, who have also looked at the role of uh, bank competition and local market structure in household financial decisions. Um, I would say the, uh, our contribution with respect to their work is uh, that we've we're using new data on the uh, novel institutional uh, con uh, context and fo we focus specifically on this refinancing process with uh, a, a model and, and, and its predictions. Um, so let's now dive into uh, the analysis and start uh, uh, with, with the model and to make sure we're all on board, we're gonna start with the, the simplest case possible. So, so when would, should you refinance your mortgage. Suppose that you've taken on a, a mortgage with fixed interest rates. So uh, obviously you want to refinance when interest rates fall. Now how much do you want to refinance? What's going to be uh, your gain? Uh, well your gain is going to depend on the duration of your mortgage. Uh, so a mortgage can be uh, compared to an annuity where basically the bank is buying the annuity and so if interest rates fall the value of the annuity uh, increases. The bank makes a capital gain and the the size of this capital gain is going to uh, depend on this formula here, so D0, which is the value of the uh, mortgage, the size of the mortgage, duration uh, star, which is the uh, modified duration of the mortgage, and the change in interest rate, okay? And uh, what the uh, right-hand figure shows you there is uh, numerical simulations where we compute the euro uh, benefit that you would have for a 250,000 euro mortgage depending on the interest rate, the initial interest rate, and the maturity of the mortgage. And so uh, the longer the maturity of the of mortgage, the higher the benefit of uh, refinancing. And uh, so that is the, the benefit side. And so to decide whether to refinance or not, you're going to compare it to the costs. And so um, in the case of uh, Belgium, the costs of refinancing internally with your bank or changing bank are different. And in particular, if you switch bank, you have to pay notary f uh, fees. Uh, because you have to change the notarial deeds, and these are quite high. And so uh, in that uh, example here, with this 250,000 uh, mortgage, you'd have to pay uh, a cl uh, close to 10,000 euros, around 8,000 euros uh, of uh, fees, of costs, in order to uh, refinance externally. If you refinance internally, you don't need to go to the notary, uh, but you still have a number of uh, fees that you need to pay, and these are around uh, 1,000 to 2,000 euros. And so so simple uh, refinancing decision rule, you refinance uh, as soon as your benefit would be uh, greater than that cost and you just go to your bank and, and refinance. Uh, obviously in practice it's 
uh, more uh, complicated uh, because um, you have to have the bank to agree to refinance. And so in particular, the law says that you can always buy back your mortgage uh, with these uh, uh, costs that are um, basically uh, framed by the law. Um, but uh, typically you borrow for a reason and so you need money in order to buy back uh, your mortgage and that's why you want to refinance. And so uh, to study that, we, ha we uh, now consider a, a broader setup where uh, the borrower are going to bargain with the bank, okay? And so here the borrower has a mortgage and the mortgage is issued at an in in initial interest rate of R0. Uh, the interest rate falls, so the value increases to V1, the value of the mortgage, and uh, the borrower is going to uh, bargain with the bank. And the, the, the best way to see uh, the, the model setup is probably with the following uh, figure. So there are gonna be three stages. First, the borrower is going to go to its bank, uh, bank A, and the bank is going to make an offer at which it's willing to buy back uh, the mortgage. And uh, the borrower can uh, then make one of two decisions. So either the borrower can accept this offer, and so in that case, the payoff to the borrower is going to be equal to VA, the value that he gets minus V0, and uh, the, the value that for repaying uh, the existing mortgage, or, uh, and the, the bank is going to gain uh, the difference between V1, the true value of the, of the mortgage, and VA, that's the offer that has been made, okay? The borrower can uh, decide to reject this offer, and in that case, there's gonna be a realization of a random shock um, that's a state of nature where the search process can break down, and the process is going to break down with some probability one minus beta. If there is this breakdown, then the borrower uh, stops searching and the bank basically keeps the full, uh, the full capital gain. Uh, and so this uh, breakdown probability is a reduced form way of measuring the uh, bargaining power of the borrower. And so that's been used by, uh, in work by Denis Gromb and Acharya and Yorul Mazer, uh, for example. And so beta is, you can think really of this as the bargaining power of the borrower. Why? Because uh, if beta is relatively low, bank A knows that uh, if, it, uh, if, the, if the borrower rejects the offer, then there's the high likelihood that it's going to break down, and so it can use that in order to extract more from the, from the borrower. If the, there's no breakdown, the borrower then goes to the competing bank, bank B, who's going to make some offer V1B. If the borrower accepts that offer, the payoff is V1B minus V0 minus C. So there's this extra switching cost here, C. Uh, and, and we assume that the offer of uh, bank B here is uh, competitive so that the uh, payoffs to bank uh, A and bank B are zero. I should have mentioned that in the uh, matrices, the payoffs are first the payoff of the borrower, then the payoff of bank A, then the payoff of bank B. If uh, the borrower rejects the offer of bank B, it can then go back to bank A, and so if there's no breakdown, uh, bank A is then going to make uh, a new, a revised offer, which the borrower may or may not uh, accept, uh, and, uh, and with, again, this realization of the state of nature. Uh, and so really the two important parameters here are this uh, switching cost here, uh, C, that is the cost of going to the uh, external bank, and the uh, no breakdown probability which is gonna capture the bargaining power of the borrower. Uh, the uh, model, so we can solve the model using backward induction, and the model yields uh, basically three regimes. So the uh, first case is that the borrower uh, can be captive. So bank A would refuse to uh, refinance the mortgage, and why? Uh, well, because even if that, so that happens in cases where the offer of bank B um, is, uh, would give a positive payoff, um, but that ignoring the, the cost of switching. When, once you take into account this high cost of switching, the, the payoff to the borrower is negative, and the bank knows this, and so it basically refuses to uh, refinance because it knows that the borrower is not going to switch, and so that's the case of capital 
captive borrower. Um, if the external offer, the outside offer is uh, credible, so would give some positive uh, payoff, then the bank is going to um, um, make an offer that, is, that gives just basically the outside, um, the outside payoff to the borrower. And so that's given here by the uh, VA, which is going to be the offer of bank A. In the third case, there's going to be an external uh, a refinancing, a switching, and this is going to uh, occur when bank B has a very high cost advantage relative to bank A, uh, so that the offer is so attractive that bank A uh, basically cannot compete. And so these are the, the different uh, uh, outcomes of the model from which we can uh, uh, derive a number of uh, empirical predictions. So uh, uh, first, refinancing propensities and realized uh, refinancing gains uh, are going to, um, so the refinancing gains are going to positively influence uh, refinancing propensities, in particular the role of uh, maturity, loan size are going to um, uh, be positively related to refinancing activity. Uh, the model predicts that if there's a rise in bank competition, refinancing activity is also going to rise, and in particular external refinancing, and these uh, household switching costs, which uh, um, can be seen as the notary fees, but also um, cognitive fees or the cost of administrative uh, costs. Of, of switching bank, uh, these uh, costs are going to influence uh, the, um, the probability of external refinancing. And so with these uh, predictions in mind, we move uh, to the data, and the data that we use is um, uh, from the uh, household credit registry of the National Bank of Belgium, where we observe the universe of household uh, borrowing from 2006 to 2021. So for all residents in Belgium, we observe all their loans outstanding, uh, including uh, consumer loans, and we also observe uh, defaults. And um, uh, so this data is at the loan borrower issuer level. So we also have the identity of the, of the bank. And so on average for any given year, we have uh, around 2.8 million borrowers. Uh, for a population of Belgium of around uh, 10 to 11 million uh, and around two loans per borrower. And uh, we complement this with data on the location of bank branches to get an idea of the uh, structure of the local uh, banking market. And so one of the first uh, things that we do is to uh, identify refinance mortgages. And here, a specific feature of the data is that the refinance mortgages have a, are directly flagged, but only from 2018. So before that, we need to construct and identify these refinancing, uh, refinanced loans. And so we do that by looking at uh, loans with similar loan uh, amount, where you have a loan that disappears and a new loan that uh, appears with the same amount for the same borrower. And so we define that as refinancing. And this uh, figure here to the, to the left, shows you um, the amount of refinancing, refinancing activity over time. And we uh, divide that into internal refinancing, so staying at the same bank, or external refinancing. And so we see that most of the refinancing is done internally. And um, um, there's also quite a bit of variation over time, in particular with uh, 2013, 14, and 15, where you had a really a big wave of, of refinancing in Belgium. Um, so this um, uh, map here shows you uh, further ev evidence on the geographical heterogeneity. So if we look at the uh, refinancing activity in 20, uh, 2015, we see that it uh, uh, varies across regions with no clear pattern. If we look at the external refinancing, it seems more uh, concentrated towards the south of the country. That's uh, 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 yeah, uh, illustrating some of the uh, heterogeneity across the different municipalities. In, in Belgium. Uh, and so one of the first uh, predictions uh, is that borrowers are going to refinance more when their gains from refinancing are higher, and the gains are higher when the maturity is longer or the size. Is. And so for each loan, we compute the counterfactual, the, the potential benefit that the um, borrowers could have for, for refinancing these uh, mortgages using changes in the benchmark interest rates. 
And uh, we then uh, put the um, loans into uh, 10 buckets, 10 deciles, with uh, deciles to the right having the largest uh, gain, potential gain from refinancing. And uh, what we see is, well, first the increasing uh, uh, relationship. So with a higher gain from refinancing, borrowers tend to refinance uh, more. But I think an also, another striking feature of this uh, graph here is, th is we really see the failure to refinance in the sense that uh, for uh, loans with who would get this uh, potential benefit, who have a positive benefit to refinance, uh, we see that there's uh, here only 20% uh, that is uh, actually refinancing. Um, and so, so this, is, this was on the first prediction, so on the, the relationship between refinancing activity and the potential gain. Next, we turn on to the role of bank competition. And here, um, this uh, slide here just gives you some uh, idea of the variation that we're going to use. So this uh, picture shows you the number of bank branches for the seven largest bank in Belgium uh, from 2000 to 2020. And we see there's been a steady decline in the number number of uh, bank branches, uh, which has changed the, the, the structure of the um, uh, banking landscape uh, in Belgium. Now, I'd love to say that uh, the decisions on these uh, uh, closures uh, was taken uh, uh, you know, by some executives based in uh, Amsterdam or in Paris, and uh, with di disregard to the local uh, economic conditions. Now, uh, obviously, in practice, it's uh, unlikely uh, uh, to hold it. So the way we address this is by uh, saturating the regressions with a, a number of fixed effects, including bank municipality fixed effects, uh, year bank interaction effects, borrower fixed effects. Um, but, but so you have the a sense of the variation uh, we're using. And so this uh, slide here shows you the relationship between uh, the banking market uh, competition and refinancing decisions. So the dependent variable is uh, zero or one on whether the uh, loan is refinanced. And what we see is that there's a positive relationship between refinancing activity and the number of branches uh, per square kilometer in in the municipality, uh, and uh, there is a negative relationship with the local Herfindahl index. So remember, if the Herfindahl index is relatively high, it means that the market is relatively concentrated, uh, which uh, provides some evidence of this uh, link between bank competition and refinancing uh, activity, uh, so that uh, higher bank competition is associated with higher refinancing activity. Uh, in uh, another uh, regression, we explore the role of the uh, switching cost, and uh, to do that, we focus on a specific uh, type of borrower, which are borrowers that borrow from multiple banks. Uh, and uh, the idea there is that if you have a relationship with uh, multiple banks, then the cost of switching from one bank to the other is going to be lower, uh, potentially the administrative or cognitive cost is, is, is uh, smaller. And so we explore to what extent uh, having this relationship with other banks uh, affects refinancing activity. And what we find is that um, uh, indeed borrowers with other banks uh, tend to uh, refinance more, in particular they refinance more externally, uh, so switching uh, more frequently to, to other banks. Um, and so, uh, to conclude, uh, the uh, research question uh, that we address in the paper is uh, to explore the relationship between uh, credit supply and bank competition and uh, borrower refinancing activity, and we do this in uh, using both theory and uh, data uh, with a number of uh, predictions uh, that we uh, confirm uh, that are in line with, uh, with, with the data, in particular that uh, if uh, bank competition increases is um, associated with higher uh, refinancing activity. So thank you for your attention. Thank you.